Head over then to the other side of the table because James Creedon is here with us for Media Watch. James, good evening. Uh, you've been looking at the story that they're dubbing online now, Ben Alla Gate. Uh, Emmanuel Macron, the French president, uh, really getting in for quite a lot of criticism himself. Uh, he's not spoken publicly and he's also not tweeted in four days either. That's right. And uh, a lot of people are surprised by that because ever, ever since the beginning of his uh, presidency, if ever there has been something uh, that they're not very happy about, the communication has been pretty immediate and there's been an attempt to put the fire out straight away. And in this instance, we've seen the president not speak or tweet, really, for four or five days. Uh, the last time he tweeted was on the 19th of July. This is very unusual. If you scroll down through his Twitter account, multiple tweets every day since mm -hmm. the beginning of his presidency and well before. So that shows that something... Uh, is definitely uh, um, up in terms of uh, worry in the Elysium about how to manage this communications wise. We have heard from Ben Allah through his mm. lawyer uh, saying that uh, he is stunned by the polemic around his case, claims he only gave a hand to the police when he hit demonstrators and says he's being used to target the president. Uh, so that's uh, communication coming from Ben Allah, but not directly from Emmanuel Macron. Uh, we also see that plans for the president to attend a stage of the Tour de France uh, on Wednesday are cancelled. This tweet here saying, you know, France is going through a serious political scandal when its president decides uh, it won't be a good idea uh, this year to follow a Tour de France mountain stage. Um, so yes, it, by, the, by, by that time on Wednesday, if he still hasn't spoken, we will have almost one week of silence from the president and the presidency. That's yeah. kind of unprecedented. Yeah. Um, then in terms of all the details that have been coming out in the last 24 hours, Alexandre Benalla, uh, who of course those who have been following it will know he was dressed as a police officer despite never having been a police officer uh, while at May Day rallies, uh, while having taken a day off work as a uh, an assistant, essentially, uh, in the Elysee Palace. Uh, and uh, he sort of took it upon himself, wearing police outfit, whatever, to help the police, uh, quote unquote, uh, by, uh, I suppose, manhandling protesters in a situation that didn't, from the video evidence, seem to merit it. So that's where the scandal started. And then who sanctioned that, who gave permission? That's why we've had parliamentary inquiries and all of the rest of it. And now it, was, it appears that one of the elements of defence is that Alexandre Benalla was looking into a reorganisation project for Emmanuel Macron's security. You do have something called uh, the uh, security group of the, pres of the President of the Republic. Uh, it's called the GSPR. That is a service, police service, dedicated to the President's protection. So what a lot of criti tr criticism is centering on is the fact that this was a sort of a parallel or unofficial uh, form of security. Uh, we also see that he had access to uh, top secret classified information since 2017. Uh, clearly, he was somebody who was in the inner circle of the president. He had the keys to uh, private residences and whatnot, holidayed with the president and his, uh, and his wife. So it was a case of him being a confidant, a trusted mm -hmm. member of the inner circle, who was then given, I suppose, special treatment. I mean, that's what the criticism is centering on. And also the fact that the communications aspect has been so mishandled. The early responses from the Elysee sort of saying, he was sanctioned, he was given a very severe sanction and for two weeks he was taken off all responsibilities and then given reduced responsibilities when now we see photos emerging from various media showing that he still continued to accompany the president on official trips and that fly, that is actually in contradiction to what the spokesperson at the Elysee said. Uh, so it's, it's, it's uh, definitely a case of the Elysee now trying to just go into silent mode to figure out how an attempted cover-up, a botched cover-up, can now be better managed. I, I think that's uh, one way of summing it up. Yeah, better management, uh, certainly what the Elysee Palace is trying to do. Uh, but from what we've seen in the past couple of days, uh, the press really are unhappy with uh, how Emmanuel Macron uh, has been handling this. You've been looking for us then at some uh, editorials. That's right. And uh, various opinion pieces. And, and, and they, they keep sort of, uh, what would you say, uh, digging into fresh pieces of, of information mm. that are emerging. For example, since early this month, uh, it, it turns out that Benalla was benefiting from a grace and favour apartment on the Quai uh, de Bronly. Now, in itself, the fact that the presidency has grace and favour apartments on uh, at its disposal for our staff is not unusual, but the fact that he was given uh, a duplex, an apartment that has a budget of 180,000 euros because they're actually doubling the space and they're creating a duplex for 200 metres squared, I think this is a, you know, a privileged situation. Mm -hmm. And instead of him being sanctioned, as was claimed by the Elysee Palace, it seems that he was actually somehow getting special treatment after having behaved in a way that merited sanction. So that's uh, obviously causing eyebrows to be raised. And then today mm -hmm. you had uh, all of the events at uh, the uh, uh, at the Parliament with the Interior Minister and the Prefect of Police sort of 
throwing the hot potato back at the Elysee Palace, if you like. Lots of tweets on that as well, but I suppose it's been mainly, it's been in the news coverage. The opposition really... Uh, Loving this, I suppose, in some respects, because it allows them to point all of these incoherencies. Uh, one of the expressions used by the Paris uh, prefect uh, of police was toxic cronyism, uh, you know, in, in, in how the Elysee Palace was, uh, I suppose, communicating with elements within the police that was giving uh, these, you know, the, 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 the helmet, the outfit and whatever that he was using on May Day. So that's an expression that's being used by the police prefect in reference to people in the Elysee Palace, yeah. toxic cronyism. And so obviously the head of the far left party, Jean-Luc Mélenchon, is loving that. Editorials, uh, just very quickly, some of the quotes that have been coming out over the weekends, and it's kind of, they're all singing off the same hymn sheet, really, no matter what newspaper you're, you're looking at. You have uh, Laurent Geoffrin, editorial writer for uh, Libération. Now, um, he... Uh, he said, uh, why this indulgent goodwill towards somebody who, uh, you know, who had behaved, he actually used the term gorilla, which seems uh, maybe <laughs> not a nice term to use about anybody, but he was, you know, he had behaved in a, in a brutish manner in that video. And then there was this indulgent goodwill being extended towards him. Uh, and uh, so essentially, uh, why this special treatment? That's the question that's coming back again and again. Media parts, Edwy Planel says that this reveals Macron's presidency's shadow side or dark Dark side, he talks about the privatization of the security, the presidential security, spy-like behavior, and it, revealing the dark side of Macron's monarchical presidential style. A lot of people also expressing disappointment when uh, Macron had spoken of um, an exemplary republic. And here, what you see is, I suppose, sort of cronyism of some kind or other, which uh, definitely flies in the face of the official communication uh, about exemplary republic and whatnot. Indeed, James, looks like this is a, a scandal that for Emmanuel Macron is not going away uh, for some time. Thank you very much not indeed. James Crondon there, James Crondon there with uh, Media Watch.